Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Power Tech 10. Give me a few minutes of your time. In return, I will give you the benefit of my over 50 years of race winning engine building. This episode of Power Tech 10 is going to have something a little different from norm. What I'm going to do is run through my five golden rules for cylinder head porting. Now these are rules that I try to emphasize to my students at my cylinder head school. What I'm going to do here is introduce you to the five rules but I'm going to deal with each one separately as an entity on its own in five subsequent episodes. So let's have at it. Before we get started on the subject material of this video, I have a request. I think it's a pretty reasonable one. Before you check out from the content of this video, it would be nice if you could spend just a little time subscribing and liking it now, if you don't like the video, I would like you to, to say in the comments section below why you didn't like it. That is as helpful to us as to like and subscribe because it will give us an opportunity to see where we may be not meeting your expectations and it will help us to do better next time but please do something subscribe and like is what we would like you to do so go for it now back to our original programming just in case i forget where i am i'm going to read these rules out of my book now many of them will seem obvious there's only five but here's the deal if these rules are so obvious, how come I see so many people missing the point? And it's not just amongst amateur head porters. There's plenty of professionals out there that are also missing the point. I'm not wishing to step on your toes, but it might be a good idea if you just check this out. Rule number one. Locate the point of greatest restriction and work on that first. This seems so obvious, and yet it's one of those rules that is completely overlooked by about 90% of people porting heads. And I'm talking professionals and enthusiasts alike here. It's only when we get to the very top professionals that we find that they unanimously go towards finding where that point of restriction is or the greatest restriction and attempting to fix it it's almost got to be a second nature with people who do nascar heads and pro stock heads and things like this probably to the point they don't realize they're doing it i'll go into that to make sure that you yes i mean you have got the point so we'll deal with that in our first episode of this five rule uh, system. Point number two. I better get the book. Rule number two. And some of the regular viewers may have noticed I've quoted rule number two in one of my previous videos I can't remember which one now but that's why I've got the book here because I also can't see a script from very far away so I'm checking in the book rule number two this is page 80 of the book let the air move the way it wants to not the way you think it should you can't defy physics and the laws of nature. You're stuck with them. Use them to your benefit, and that requires that you understand them. 
and I hate to mention this, but if you don't understand what's going on here for real, you may as well join the Flat Earth Society now because none of them seem to understand what gravity is. Anyway, enough of that. I've pointed out many times that you have to have the air go where it wants to go and we're going to do an extensive episode on that. It achieves many things. If you let the air go the direction that it prefers to go in, you end up with a more efficient port. A port that has more energy, more velocity and gets the job done better. That in simple terms means more torque. Which if it sustains that torque, and it will, better than a lazy port, it will carry on up further and the engine will make more horsepower. It won't be able to help itself. It, has, it is going to do that. And this is one of those rules that um, uh, I like to shove down the throats of people who say, well, an engine's just a simple air pump. No, I've said this before. If it was a simple air pump, we'd have been building engines that made two horsepower per cubic inch back in 1910. Well, we weren't. So where were we going wrong? Simple. It's not simple. So what's rule number three? I can remember that one because this is something that so many people do not appreciate. Now, when I say so many, I'm talking about one in maybe a hundred head porters can give you the number for this right off the top of their head. And let me tell you, it doesn't actually mean that that 1% are all professionals. No, about half of them are. I've asked guys who port pro stock heads, well, how heavy is air? And they look at me blank. Number of times I've heard people say, what can DV tell a pro stock head porter he doesn't already know? Well, <laughs> that's one right there. Yes, air is a lot heavier. Now it's 20% oxygen and pretty much close to 80% nitrogen. Let me give you an example here. Let's take a typical school gymnasium. How heavy would you think the air was in that gymnasium? Now, I'm going to tell you at the end of this section, just so that you can appreciate it, but I get answers which range from, typically, from everything from about 10 pounds, and a typical answer, right, to about 400 pounds. Occasionally I get people who will quote me an answer in tons, usually about four tons, six tons, ten tons, twelve tons, but that's about as high as it ever goes. That's not the answer. I don't think in 30 years I've had anyone, and we're talking about 3,000 students plus here, in 30 years of university lectures, I've had one person be able to tell me how heavy the air is in a cube 100 feet by 100 by 100. That's about the size of a gym, school gymnasium, right? The floor area is bigger, right? They're bigger than 100 by 100, but they're not 100 feet high. They're more like about 40 feet high, but, but a school gym will be a fairly recognizable deal. Just to show now that uh, air is heavier than you think, if we were to have that 100 foot cube and weigh it, it would tip the scales at just over 38 tons. Surprised? You need to see how we can use the weight of that air to our advantage, right? That's episode number three. Well, we're at rule number four now. In fact, 
Four and five are pretty short rules, but they're very important to stick to. Uh, let me just refer to my trusty book here. Rule number four, mixture motion is important. Do not ignore the need for it. Now we get mixture motion two ways. Via swirl, usually generated from the port, and via the quench area. Now, it's amazing how so many people disregard the quench area, especially those who are building an engine for a supercharger use and they, they uh, think, ah, I can lower the compression by putting in a thicker gasket or skimming a little off the pistons. Well, that is the worst way to reduce the compression because it also increases the likelihood of detonation. So, you need to know about that. Also, we find that as the compression ratio is increased, we make our exhaust more effective at the, at the uh, end of the stroke. So quench and swirl motion from the uh, port are factors that need to be rated highly. Um, those of you who dyno lots of different engines and really dyno down in the low speed range may have noted that many Ford engines, mostly the small blocks with certain cylinder heads, don't do too well for torque at low speed. Why? Because the Chevrolet heads have inbuilt motion from the swirl of the port. But the angle that the Ford port comes in at actually tries to counter any effect of swirl, hence less torque. That's all fixable though, right? So it's a factor that you need to understand whilst you're modifying your cylinder heads. Now let's look at rule number five. Boy, this one is one that is so misunderstood, it's unreal. Let me read it out to you. Shape is all important. A shiny finish is not. There are certain uh, posters on YouTube who've managed to get huge number of hits on ports where they have simply polished them. And there is this very common belief that a polish is what makes the head work. It's not. In fact, a polish finish usually drops power. We'll talk about that when we get to that section. However, I've now covered the five golden rules. The next move is to start on each one individually and really get down to business as to what we are trying to do. If you can wade through all that I'm going to put out there, then you will have a great deal more science at your bidding to get your cylinder heads making more horsepower. Remember, the only reason that we're porting them is to make more torque and more horsepower. I'm going to tell you how that is done. Thank you.